Hi y'all, I'm Gina with Country Family Values and today we're going to be making chicken adobo in the Instant Pot. This one is made with a lot of your basic pantry things like vinegar and garlic and brown sugar and it's really flavorful so you might want to give it a try. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on saute and I'm going to add some oil. I'm using the grapeseed oil. I'm going to use about two tablespoons. Let that go to getting hot. And then I'm going to season up this chicken with some kosher salt and pepper. And today, since I'm just cooking for me and my husband, I'm just using four thighs here. But usually, I cook anywhere from six to eight of these. I'm going to go ahead and use the same ingredients as I would if I were cooking a larger batch. But just so you guys know that way you can do that if you want to as well um, but that's what the deal is let's get this over so you guys can see what I'm doing here and just so you know these are still partially frozen I've just thought them enough to to get them apart so I will probably be increasing the cook time just a little bit when they're completely thawed, the cook time is about 8 minutes, so I'm probably going to increase it to about 12. One of the things I really like about this is it's so zesty. Some of the ingredients, you know, it just uses a lot of the basic pantry staple ingredients. It it doesn't sound like it would be that good, but it's really, really flavorful and tasty and easy. Don't let me forget easy. My husband is a really picky eater, and this was one he really enjoyed. So the oil's gotten hot, and what I like to do is brown my chicken a little bit. handling the raw meat I always like to wash my hands good especially chicken it has a bacteria that you can just spread with everything you touch if you don't wash your hands so make sure you guys do that to let it be browning in the center. If you were doing six to eight pieces of these, you would probably need to wait until you remove these out, set them into another bowl, and then do your onions and stuff. But since I don't have so much in here, I'm going to go ahead and combine these steps. This is a large onion that I have sliced, kind of julienne style, I guess you'd call it. Add a couple of two tablespoons of minced garlic. Just gonna want to 
saute these down until they get kind of translucent is basically what we're going for here. Since the onions are beginning to get translucent, I'm going to turn that off for a minute. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape this a little bit because I'm don't want it to get that burn signal. Let me go ahead and add my liquids. I have a half of a cup. This is apple cider vinegar. A lot of the recipes use the um, white vinegar, and you're definitely um, you can definitely do that. Here I have some soy sauce. I'm using the low sodium and I have about a fourth of a cup here. And I'm going to continue to scrape this a little bit. It's a little easier when you have that cool liquid in there. burn pieces up off the bottom there. Okay. Now I'm going to add a tablespoon of brown sugar and you can add one to two tablespoons really. It's just basically according to how much sweetness you want. But I'm just going to do one for now. If it's not enough, I may come back and add later. That's the beauty of cooking at home. You can just adjust it to your own taste. This here is optional, but it is something that I really like to add. But if you don't have it, you don't have to put it in. It's fish sauce. I'm going to put a tablespoon in here. I just think it adds a kick of flavor. But a lot of recipes don't add it. But like I said, I've tried several different versions of this recipe, and that is really makes it, um, it just kicks the flavor up quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to add some bay leaves. I'm going to add three. If you only have a couple, that should still be enough. After I set this to cook, a lot of times I like to add some some veggies to this. Like I'm, I will probably let this cook down a little bit and have put some broccoli in it. Doesn't seem like we get enough vegetables in our diet, so I definitely try to sneak in some every chance I get. Put the lid on it. Make sure it's sealing. And then I'm going to set that manually to 12 minutes. I'm setting that for 12 minutes. And like I said before, if your chicken is not frozen, you can set your timer for 8 minutes and that would be sufficient. While we wait, I wanted to share um, a, a little communication activity. Since we're all stuck in quarantine, um, you're probably spending a lot of time with one another. And one of the games that went, usually went over really well with families that I worked with it was what I call the storytelling game. So basically you're grading one another on your listening skills in this game. So, like, the first thing that you want to do as parents is describe good communication or good listening skills. Things like eye contact, not interrupting, to ask questions that are relevant to the topic and not just jumping in. Another way to uh, show interest is little word encouragers like, oh, or 
Mm -hmm. You know, just to kind of let the person know that you're still paying attention. You know, like if you were telling me about uh, your shopping trip and I say, yeah, just some little word, you know, or, or you might even ask a question or what color dress did you say you were looking for? You know, just something to show that you're paying attention, that you're keeping up. Um, one of the things that usually demonstrates poor communication and poor listening skills is if you demonstrate, like, if someone's listening, supposed to be listening to you and you roll your eyes at them, then that's poor listening skills. Another example is like if someone is talking to you and you just kind of turn away from them, turn your back to them, that demonstrates really quickly to kiddos. And so demonstrating things like that kind of sets the tone. Also, you can teach your kids about like if they're fidgeting with different things and not really looking at you very much when you're talking or telling a story, whatever, then you can kind of demonstrate how like if um, there's, if you're supposed to be listening to them, for example, you can be going, mm -hmm, feeling with your nails or whatever, you know, and just kind of acting like what they're saying doesn't matter at all. Then that quickly demonstrates how that's frustrating to, to the person that's actually trying to talk to them. But in this game, when you actually jump into it, what you're going to do is take turns with your family, your kiddos in particular, telling stories. And the story can be made up. It can be about uh, your favorite activity together, like a camping trip or their first day of school or just something that means something to them. It's just up to them. Or they can, a lot of kiddos definitely like to just make up a story. But what's going to happen is you will pick the, the person that's picking, that's telling the story, they're going to pick someone to be the listener. And then everybody grades the listener on how well they listened. You know, whether that's an A, a B, a C. And parents, you're definitely going to have to, um, I've noticed it when doing this activity, a lot of times people want to give a poor grade to the other kiddos, even if they did well. So, you know, use your own discretion at that with that activity. But it is something that allows you to teach a communication skill, and listening is definitely one of those things, um, in a more fun way. And it's just you know, getting a little creative with it. I hope you guys have fun with it. So I've allowed this to natural release for about 10 minutes after the timer went off. I'm going to turn it to vent and allow it to finish releasing its pressure. I'm going to remove the chicken out and I'm going to put some broccoli down in this uh, sauce and let it cook together um, and I'll, hit, I'll put this on saute and let it reduce down some while I'm cooking the broccoli in it. down the way I like it, then I'm going to serve it over rice. Now this is, the broccoli's gotten about where I like it, but the sauce is still a little too thin for me. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, it's still really thin. What I'm going to do is use cornstarch. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of cornstarch mixed in with 
one tablespoon of cold water. It has to be cold water. And stir that up really well. And then I'm going to add that mixture to this and then stir it. See it starts thickening up rather quickly. And I'm going to be removing the bay leaves. My husband hates to find those left in there. <laughs> There's the third one. All right. Now that looks really good to me. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe and ring that bell so that you can be informed when other videos become available. And as always, thank you so much for watching.